Good morning, it's Monday, August 17th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion this morning is entitled, Looking for a Place to Hide, and our scripture is Psalm 130. From the depths of despair, O Lord, I call for your help. Hear my cry, O Lord. Pay attention to my prayer, Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who, O Lord, could ever survive? But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. I'm counting on the Lord. Yes, I'm counting on him. I've put my hope in his word. I long for the Lord more than centuries long for the dawn. Yes, more than centuries long for the dawn. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is unfailing love. His redemption overflows. He himself will redeem Israel from every kind of sin. I can recall with vivid accuracy that anxiety, being on edge, and the feeling of nervous forebode in the pit of my stomach. The preacher was talking about that book, the one where God records all our sins, and he went on and on about it, picking at every last thing I'd ever done wrong. And then he said, if I wanted to make it into the other book, that one where the saved people have their names written, I'd better change. It was time to decide. That preacher hardly knew me, but then again, he did. He was speaking about the universal condition of human fallenness. Every person has a sin nature, and we succumb to temptation in one way or another. My sins may not have been the same as yours, but they are mine nonetheless. And that preacher knew it. And I was definitely looking for a place to hide. And then along comes Solomon to back up the preacher's argument and then blow it up in the next breath. Solomon points to the most devastating and annoying truth in human existence. God keeps a record of our sins. Psalm 130 verse 3, Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who, O Lord, could ever survive? I don't know how God could be God unless he was aware of everything. My sins are not hidden from him, and neither are yours. Something deep within inside each of us tells us that there's nothing we can truly bury so deep as to hide it from God. But I also mentioned that in Solomon's next stroke of the pen, he blew up the whole judgment thing. Psalm 130 and verse 4, But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. In just two sentences that take just eight seconds to read aloud, Solomon, the wisest man to ever draw breath, covers the most important reality in the universe. We have all sinned and are guilty before God, and God has already decided to forgive us. That other book, the one where the saved people have their names written, your name is already in that book. According to the book of Revelation, names are written in the book of life and only erased if there is no forgiveness for sins. But for those who trust in the victory of Jesus Christ, whose death on the cross was for our forgiveness, those names are not erased, but proclaimed innocent in heaven. Revelation 3 and verse 5, all who are victorious will be clothed in white. I will never erase their names from the book of life, but I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. So the good news in that uncomfortable truth the preacher was laying on my 10 year old self about how if I wanted to escape the flames of hell and get my name in Jesus book, well, he was right about my guilt. But he should have told me my name was already in Jesus' book, written in blood. For you today, God knew each of us before we were formed in our mother's wombs. He had written our name in his eternal book. And with each entry, the mind and heart of God uttered that familiar word we see in Scripture, Come. For you and me, that is the sweetest word our souls could ever hear. It means we don't have to look for a place to hide, now or ever. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road today. Have a blessed day.